playing cowboy. Come on, let's go. I'm an old cow Fight, you're gonna fight. Oh, yes, so you reckon this thing is loaded? Hi, I'm John Malos, and today, connect with me. We're gonna talk about the Discovery Center in Southeast Fresno. Do you know what the Discovery Center is? Have you ever heard of it? Do you know it's been around Fresno since 1954? Did you know that? It's located out by the airport. We'll talk to the president of the Discovery Center and your phone calls, 265-4331. If you have kids, you'll want to watch. If some of our viewers out there, some of you I'm talking about, have kids like I do and all they want to do is be a couch potato, they want to watch Netflix or a movie or play on their video games or sit there and text day after day, minute after minute, hour, hour by hour, and you're just getting irritated by the second, okay? You want them to get off the couch and get out and do something. This weekend is the perfect time to do it. You got to go out to the Discovery Center. You know why? Because there is a soft grand opening. A so I don't know what that means. Soft grand opening as opposed to a hard grand opening. Anyway, let's go to the videotape and I'll show you what I'm talking about. The soft grand opening takes place this coming Saturday. The big grand opening takes place on March the 16th. Here it is. 4.4 acres of land near the airport on winery. It's like a natural history museum. In fact, there is a dinosaur Yes, a dinosaur, ladies and gentlemen, hanging from the ceiling in the Natural History Museum. It's an interactive exhibit, and they're all over the place once you walk in that building. It's like a learning center for kids of all ages, even adults. This is a place where the kids can actually roll their sleeves up and actually touch and feel some of the exhibits, the fossils, the rocks, and other ancient artifacts. Look at that. They've even got lizards. Not sure if you can touch those live reptiles, but they have snakes. They have a python and a boa constrictor. Oh my goodness, 20 to 25,000 students in the Fresno County area come through the Discovery Center each and every year as part of their science project for school. Indian artifacts as well. They can actually touch those, but in May of 2000, a huge fire gutted the science building out there. It took 13 years and some $200,000 to refurbish. City of Fresno owns the land. They outsource it or actually lease it to the city for a mere $50 a year. Live in our studio now is Gary Pig. He is the president of the Discovery Center. It's located on a winery out there by the airport, out there by the two TV stations. You know where KMPH is located? You know where KC24 is located? You know where that KFC chicken is located? Right behind there. They've got 4.4 acres of land. The soft opening is this coming Saturday. So if you want to take your kids, your grandkids out there, you've got nieces, nephews, hey, this is the place to be this Saturday. We've got the president in the house, 265-4331. You've already got the number memorized. So call in if you have a question. We're back in just a moment. Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first pulsator agitator washer. And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. And we're back, so if you're tired of your kids uh, sitting on the couch doing absolutely nothing and just being total couch potatoes, uh, this coming Saturday you might want to go out to the Discovery Center and take them out there and spend the day because they have all sorts of things out there. They have, a, they have park benches. You can take a, a, a brown, brown bag lunch and eat lunch out there if you want. 
um, and do whatever. Gary Pig is here, the president of the uh, center. How are you, Gary? I'm doing well this morning. You God. look wonderful. I'm feeling great. So that hard opening, I, 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 I kind of misspoke. The, the date is not March the 16th. It's you the, changed it, huh? We changed it last night at the board meeting to the 30th. You did that on purpose, just to mess me up this morning, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> it, it, it turned I'm out kidding. better for I'm a lot kidding. of our guests. No. Who, so who's going to be there on the, well, on the 30th? Well, I hope to have the mayor there. We're going to have our uh, council members there and, mem and members of the uh, city staff that were very helpful in us uh, 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 negotiating our long-term lease. Yeah. Well, you had the big fire in 2000. It took several years, 13 years to refurbish that science building. That's correct. And $200,000 in damage. Where did all the money come from to refurbish it? Well, we had to look around to uh, what assets we had available, and uh, we had a number uh, of uh, Indian baskets, uh, which uh, consumed about a third of the building. And uh, the cost of maintaining those baskets and the fact that they could have been destroyed and cost so much to have them refurbished, we uh, sold those baskets and raised the, uh, when that funds went back into the building. I see. So, but it why did it take so long, though? Money? You know, uh, no, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, uh, by, uh, board at that time, uh, the fire in 2000, uh, they had some great ambitious plans about building a brand new building. And until the re economic realities finally set in uh, with the city and with uh, the board, uh, that we could not build a new building. So was it was kind of a political issue it, for the longest time. It kind of lingered, didn't? Did it not? I would say uh, I'm not sure if I'd call it characterized as political so much as trying to make the best solution uh, for a very uh, difficult uh, task. Right, and there you were know, some disagreements on how to do that because Larry sure. Westerlin, the former city councilman, he wanted to build a new building. That's up there correct. And get rid of your office building across the street on correct. Winery, and that didn't fly. You know, and the economic realities uh, set in, and uh, we just had to look at uh, what was practical. What was the, and what was what did the community really need? It yeah. needed a building, and the one we had was serviceable if refurbished. Right. Okay. Let's go out to the Discovery Center. We're going to roll the videotape right now, and we're going to go right through the front door. There's the sign right there, and talk about the opening this coming Saturday. What is a soft opening? What does that mean? Soft opening is sort of like uh, sea trials of a new ship. Okay. You know, you want to get it underway, <laughs> you want to test everything, you want to make sure that the uh, you know, credit card machine works if somebody wants to buy a membership. This is some of what we'll see uh, at the Discovery Center, right? Uh, of course, it, you know, you, he, I think he died of malnutrition, did he not? Well, it's a great <laughs> exhibit, so kids can put their hands on that and, and yeah. you know, what does a rib look like? And you can actually feel it. Yeah. Well, anyway, so what else here? What do we got? These are uh, uh, exhibits where the, you can take uh, tongs and you can move, it, find the organs and get some real close-up personal uh, opportunities to uh, consider yourself a doctor, for instance. Hands-on, and there are some of the parts right there that you can actually feel and touch from a medical standpoint, okay. This is all about sound, We and this is a part of the blessing that we've uh, received in, the, in, uh, in Fresno. Fresno is a very giving community. This gentleman came forward and said, look, I want to produce a, an exhibit for you about sound. And so he's done almost all of that by himself, and so a young person can, can play the xylophone can play mm -hmm. a bang on uh, on the uh, the bells. We don't care. We want you to have fun, and it's sort of hands-on science for kids and families. Uh, some exhibits on the wall there. And These are things that you can play with. You can move uh, around the pieces on the magnetic board. There's a little something about botany. Uh, you know, every kid uh, probably has some uh, aptitude or dream, and we're one of the things we'd like to do is have uh, have put a place where a child can learn what they might be interested in and then hopefully they'll follow that string and maybe even make a career out of something they've seen here at the Discovery Center. Right. Of course, we're looking inside the miniature aquarium there. And yep. uh, so what age groups are we talking about mainly that come through there? Mainly we're talking about probably uh, uh, 4 to 18. Okay. That would be the biggest okay. bulk of the uh, young people who come through. All right, and even teenagers who've been through those elementary school years and they know all about this kind of stuff like fish and rocks and fossils and this and that, are they still fascinated when they go in there? Well, you know, some of the things we have outside is the Gemini space capsule. 
you know, if you've never seen what a Gemini right. space capsule looks like, you want to take a look. Yeah, we're actually going to show that in a couple of minutes. But uh, so, so what does this soft opening mean for this coming Saturday? Does it does it mean that uh, you're not going to go all out, but it's kind of a kind of a test, almost like a test pattern, right? It, well, we, it's uh, it's an opportunity for us to meet uh, some friends who've okay. been active in uh, bringing the the Discovery Center back to life. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's an opportunity for our staff and the trustees to get used to having the museum open. You know, it's been closed for 12 years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a bit of a learning curve. We want to make sure the door is open, the, uh, everything works. Yeah. I'm going to take you back inside the Discovery Center, the Science Building, and take a look at probably one of the favorites for kids, and that's lizards. Look at that. You've got several of them there. Yes, we do. And you, have, our, you have a full-time caretaker for them? Well, we do. The, our uh, director, <laughs> uh, Mary Ellen Wright, uh, has uh, a lot of experience and certifications in uh, looking after uh, these uh, lizards and, and uh, some of the other animals that we have. Right, and uh, you have several uh, of the reptiles on hand and on display. Will the kids be able to touch them? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, okay. These are not something that, uh, we, there are a couple that uh, are brought out and uh, kids can touch those, uh, right. but with, a, with a, one of our curators uh, standing right with them. Primarily, these are in glass cages. That's true. Yeah, so you can look, but for the most part, you probably can't touch. That's correct. Yeah, okay, and, you know... Um, Bearded dragons. Yeah. Uh, okay, so. and so that takes place this coming Saturday starting at what time, Gary? Uh, starting at noon to four. Noon to four, and you can take a brown bag out Absolutely. there. Absolutely, huh? and you know the park itself is open and that's free. Yeah, we'll the talk about that in a couple of minutes. We got to take a quick commercial timeout. Hey, the telephone number here is two six five four three three one. If you want to call in and ask any questions, you want to take your kids out this coming Saturday after thirteen long years of being closed. The doors are going to open once again on Saturday on the Discovery Center. We're back in just a moment. I'm Trip Douglas. Welcome home, Mr. Duff. And I'm Ernie Douglas. James Bond, Secret Agent 007. And we're here to tell Ernie. you... Ernie! Just a minute, Uncle Charlie. Oh, come on, Ernie, you're going to be late for school. We're doing a promo for Me TV and Junk. Ernie, Trip. Yes, Dad. Come here a minute, will you? We'll be down in a minute. As I was saying... <laughs> Tram, be quiet. <laughs> Tram? <laughs> hey, have you guys seen Robbie? Oh, hi, I'm Katie Douglas. We're my three sons. Ernie, I had to learn about women like Melissa through long, tough experience. Let me make my own mistakes. They're half the fun. And one daughter-in-law. Thanks. Now I really feel like one of the family. Watch me on me. Me TV. You think girls are just boys' gift wrap? <laughs> Weekday mornings at 7, 6 central on me TV. It's real neat. The Discovery Center is the place to be on uh, Saturday. You can take your kids, your grandkids out there and have a lot of fun. So, Gary, uh, you're the president. How yes. long have you been uh, working with the Discovery Center? Uh, six years. Okay, six years. And uh, you're a volunteer. I absolutely am. You don't get paid? No. And so why do you do it? I love Fresno. Uh, we lived other places. And when we came to Fresno, the first night we were here, I said, this is fantastic. We can be outside. No bugs. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've never lived anyplace else, you may not appreciate the fact that you're not surrounded by mosquitoes right. when the sun goes down. Right. We do have a phone call. Let's take it and see what's happening here. A question for uh, Gary Pig here, the president of the Discovery Center. Good morning. You're on Connect With Me. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good. We can barely hear you. Can you speak up? Yes, we watch your show all the time. We love it. And uh, I want to know... Do you does, does the Discovery Center still have telescopes? Uh, you know, there are some telescopes uh, in the, uh, they're still stored in the winery building. Uh, as we reopen, we, uh, Mary Ellen and her team uh, are bringing uh, those items back out of the uh, uh, winery building. And I think the telescope you're thinking about, that's that really large round one. It's not open yet, oh. but we will it have will be? it. Well, let's put it this way. In the summertime, on Friday nights, we have star parties. That is just, uh, you can come at uh, just around dark, and uh, there is a professor there from uh, City College 
who will uh, explain what you're seeing. Yeah. Okay, so it's kind of an interactive center. Now, originally, this place was called the Fresno Museum of Natural History back in 1953-54 when it first started. That's correct. So that's how far back it goes. Yes. Okay, how much different was it then than it is now? You know, I wasn't here then, but as I read the uh, information, there was a trend toward a junior museum at that, in those t at that time. Uh, as moving forward into the 60s, uh, the mm -hmm. Exploratorium became a model of, uh, of an interactive museum that was more appropriate, and uh, that's kind of the model we've been following. Right, and so let's turn around to the videotape one more time and turn to the monitor, I should say, and look at some of what is on the wall inside the science building. Of course, we have numerous uh, taxidermies here. Uh, you've got <laughs> deers, bears, goats, uh, birds, a grizzly bear skin, which you're going to see at the very end right, right here. What kind of educational experience is this for the kids? This, uh, these are all donated uh, by uh, or, uh, people, uh, individuals, and organizations. Uh, and we've put from them from Fresno State, right? Fresno some State, of them? from uh, some of them, uh, from the zoo, some of them, right. from uh, some families in uh, Bakersfield. Now, we've put them up so that, uh, that the young people can get up really close. Can to they touch them? Yes, they can touch them. Okay. Uh, we're all about, that's our, one of our mottos is touch, touch, touch. Mm -hmm. So they can actually touch the birds and the deers. That's and, correct. Uh, you know, it looks like a moose there. <laughs> if that's you look correct. At some of the video, uh, bird hanging from the. Uh, I can't wait to see the very end, of, bitter end of this videotape because. Oh, what is that right there? That is a coyote. Okay. And that coyote actually was in a cage. Uh, back in the 50s, uh, that was uh, considered okay. We don't consider it okay anymore. Here's a goat. And yeah, that is on display there, right That's next right. to the window. But keep the videotape rolling because we want to see the bitter end of this. And it's actually a grizzly bear skin from head to toe. As you take a look at uh, a wild bird there, that's very impressive Eagle. as you walk in and that's look right. at all of these animals. You can get uh, close. Yeah, you can get close and, and, and touch them. And uh, uh, were these there before the fire? Yes. They were? Yes. So they didn't get damaged. Well, uh, some of them were in different buildings. Uh, this uh, particular uh, skin has been mounted in a way so that uh, a student uh, can see, get the feel for how big this animal really is. How yeah, magnificent. That's, the, that's the grizzly bear skin I was talking animal. about. Yeah, it's absolutely magnificent in, indeed, no <laughs> doubt about it. And so uh, you're going to keep those on display for a absolutely. while. Absolutely. Yeah. But one of our goals is to change the displays, move them around so that uh, if you visit three or four times during the year, you will have a slightly different experience on every visit. Yeah. Now, you also have a little souvenir shop there that yes. I noticed. Yes. Uh, can people buy the, the, what kind of souvenirs do you have? And can, pe can people purchase well, those on the way in, on the way out, what? Absolutely. We have a little souvenir shop. Uh, there's some things that, uh, like uh, Whirly's, that a kid can buy and go outside and, and uh, experience, to have that experience. There's also memberships being sold. And memberships are a major uh, uh, help to the organization. $40 membership for four people right. to come as many times as they want. I was going to ask you, what does it cost a family to get in? Do you have to pay to get in or is it free? You do not have to pay to get into the park. The <clears throat> that's Reedy Park. Uh, our lease provides that it's open to the public. Uh, we're open six days a week, Tuesday through Sunday. And uh, they can come and visit, walk around, see the Deutsch Cactus Gardens, enjoy themselves. Uh, the museum we do charge for. How much? It's six dollars for an adult, four dollars for children, four and under is three, or three and you know, under four is three. All right, you're excited about this, aren't I you? I am very much excited. You know, we love Fresno. Uh, we came here in 1990, and and I was invited out to take a look and help them in some bookkeeping issues. So that's what I do. And I walked around the park, and uh, the book uh, D Acres of Diamonds came to mind. This was just it's an urban wilderness right near the airport. Mm -hmm. And a few minutes, no more than 30 minutes across town, and you can be in an urban uh, wilderness setting. Let the kids run free. We're totally fenced. And just have a ball. 
All right, we got more video to show our viewers. 265-4331 is the number. If you want to call in and ask Gary Pig any questions, you know, some of you who grew up here in Fresno or have been here for a while remember the Discovery Center prior to that fire in 2000. Well, this weekend they're going to open up again and then another grand, big grand opening on March the uh, 30th. That'll take place at the Discovery Center. Back in just a moment. Is taking care of laundry taking too much of your time? Have you become a missing mom? With a new fast, efficient washer and dryer from Ventura TV Video Appliance, you'll spend more of your day the way you want. This Omana Super Capacity Washer Dryer Pair is now just $6.99. And this Heavy Duty Maytag Super Capacity Washer Dryer Pair is only $8.99. Don't spend your life on laundry. Upgrade today at Ventura TV Video Appliance and save. Spotlight today, of course, is on entertainment and what to do for this coming weekend. The Discovery Center is reopening after that big fire that took place 13 years ago. It's hard to believe it's been that long since that science building there was gutted. And Gary, right. uh, what about your online projects? Can people go online and buy memberships? Can they look at a website? Do you have a website? We have a great website, thediscoverycenter.net. Okay. Somebody else had .org. The Discovery Center dot net. You have That's to put the in front of Discovery that Center. That is correct. The Discovery Center dot net. Yes, okay. sir. Easy to remember. And, and do you, you have a phone number? We have a phone number, and it's uh, two. F That's okay. Came out. That's okay. I don't remember. That's okay. And no problem. What are you guys laughing at back it's there? It's 252-5533. Anyway. Five, five, three, three. I don't there know why go. I can't don't remember do that. Don't pay attention to the laughter. Anyway, say it again. It's 252-5533. Uh, five, five, three, three. You got yeah. it. So our viewers can call in uh, on that number and find out uh, some more information. And by the way, you know, we're not done here. We've got another six, seven, eight minutes here to go. So you can call in and ask Gary some questions, too, at 265-4331. We do have a phone line uh, that is open. We want to take a look at some more video inside the Science Center. And, uh, you know, I mentioned that one of the favorites for kids, obviously, is the snakes, the lizards, the taxidermy, yes. yep. all that. But also, you can touch and feel rocks. We have a great rocks. geology uh, yes. exhibit. And quite frankly, inside uh, the winery building, which is built in 1894, mm -hmm. adds the largest adobe brick building in uh, Fresno County. We use it's it as storage like a storage right now. It's our, now. We have yeah. to use it as storage. It's not earthquake proof, yeah. obviously. We're looking at the rocks and some of the fossils now. and There's uh, little magnifying glasses there so that uh, a, a kid can uh, look at it very closely. And, you know, we have docents who, will, who are there to assist. Now, will you have educators on the scene so yes, they, can, we will. they can help the children understand what they're looking at, what yes. they're touching? Such yes, as? that's correct. We'll have, uh, they can look at the bones and uh, the shells. We have a great shell collection, seashell mm -hmm. collection. Mm -hmm. And uh, coral, there's a, uh, that barnacles looks like to me. Yeah. And so who, who's going to be on hand to, to uh, help? Mary Ellen Wright, our okay. director. She's, right. She, takes, she uh, works with all the volunteers. We have a, about six uh, volunteers who put in a tremendous amount of time. They're educators, people in uh, professional uh, careers like electronics that have been very instrumental in uh, refurbishing some of the uh, electronic exhibits, for instance. Right. And that's how the Sierra Nevada was formed, kind of a chart there showing the uh, displays and the formation of, of the, the rock. And uh, there's, there's a good display of some of the rocks on hand right now and a magnifying glass so the kids can get right in there, roll their sleeves up, get their hands That's dirty, right. get their pants dirty, get that, everything dirty. We don't care. No, no, a great, great display of um, artifacts there on hand. And also the Indian artifacts, are, are they a popular display as well? Very nice. And the uh, Indian displays that we have are uh, all about the local Indian tribes. Right. So you know, Sanger and Figure accurate that I gave earlier, Twenty to 25,000 students actually go through there? That's correct. W uh, one of our major uh, ways that we serve the community is offering a science program either in the school, we call that suitcase science, mm -hmm. or a science program where uh, uh, an elementary school teacher will bring her class uh, to the Discovery Center for a science exhibit uh, program. 
Now, obviously, the Science Center and the building, they, had, they haven't been open in 13 years, but prior to the fire, that's the average that's that correct. used to come in, about 20 that's, to 25,000. That's correct. And do, we, you, do you expect it to be like that now when it, after it reopens? You know, we anticipate an increase. Uh, More we're reaching, than that. We do, because now we have uh, an, an additional venue. Before, we had all of our programs Which were in, us, in the Johnsonville, Johnson Building, or they were outside. Okay. And we have a sheltered area, and we have a, a little stadium seating area. Yeah, we're going to take a look at that right now as we turn back to the monitor and take you outside the Discovery Center. As I said earlier, 4.4 acres of land. That's, That's an the, actual Gemini space capsule, is it not? It's the uh, model that was used for training purposes. And mm -hmm. so, and the in the the display panel where the kids can sit and flip the switches, that's all been refurbished. It's beautiful inside. Ryan, for those that don't know, the Gemini Space Program took place back in the late 50s, early 60s. Yes. So what are we looking at here as we well, take Well, that's the worm farm. Okay. There's worms growing there, and you can, uh, there's little shovels. You can pick up worms and uh, have that experience. What's this here now? On the right-hand side is uh, the maze. Okay. Kids We're going to look at that in, in a maze. second, but what are we looking at here directly? These uh, are benches. And these are uh, picnic benches. We've built a lot of picnic benches. I think we have about 22 picnic benches. So you, you can, like you say, you bring your lunch, come for at noon, bring a, uh, bring a lunch, and enjoy yourself. All right. And the kids a little have, park experience. Yeah, a little park experience right there and some, uh, you know, actual... Uh, There's some play areas, play that, areas kids, that the kids can... For young people. Yeah, That's right. 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 There's Mom. the maze you're talking about, right? That's right there? correct. That's okay. correct. How big is that maze? You know, um, probably take uh, 15 or 20 minutes for a kid to go in and find his way out. Yeah, and there we're looking back at the Discovery Center building there in the parking lot. So, And this is the cactus area. Talk about your cactus plants and this what that is. This is the Deutsch Cactus Gardens. It was be a bequest that came from the Deutsch family. It uh, was originally in the Fig Garden area, but uh, was more appropriately uh, situated here at the Discovery Center. Now, was some donated. These, some of these plants have come from all over. That's correct. We have some plants from the Galapagos. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, uh, we have a curator who is uh, with the uh, Cactus and Succulent Society. So a plant expert. That's correct. Knows a exactly. Cactus what, expert. Yes, that is <laughs> That's correct. That's more important. And we believe that this could be one of. Uh, we're going to set up a separate web page for this, uh -huh. and we believe that uh, this will be a major attraction because we want to attract people to come to Fresno. Mm -hmm. I was at the mayor's uh, downtown breakfast the other day and heard a really good report. You know, and I think that uh, Fresno is a fantastic place to live. Gary, why is the Discovery Center so open? Why the drive to reopen it? Why the drive to refurbish the building and get it back uh, to where it was and even better? Why, why is this so significant? It's significant because, you know, in order to have a beautiful community, we have to put in the work. And there are many of us who believe that a science museum such as, the, as that we saw, like I said, Acres of Diamonds, if you've never right. read the book, it's a good one. You will see that everything we need for our community is right in front of us. And this, was, this building, uh, completely gutted, needed to be reopened because it's a terrific venue. And, and, and why do you think it still attracts or will attract, is what your prediction is, more than before? Kids now more, nowadays are more into video games. They're more into the electronics, you know, texting and playing the videos. Why is this going to attract them and how? You know, I think they're there in the video games because that's what's been put in front of them. But we have an alternative. Uh, when somebody... Uh, comes from out of town, they have a place now they can go very short distance and they can be in an urban wilderness and they can redis. You know, the Discovery Center means that you come out here and all of a sudden you discover something right. that you've never this seen before. This gets them off the couch and away from Absolutely. the video Absolutely. Anybody right. who has ever looked at a picture of the Grand Canyon in the National Geographic and then gone to the Grand Canyon, there's a total, the, the picture no longer is valued. Right. Gary Pig, good to see you. Thank Come you back, very much. Huh? Oh, pretty, my yeah, pleasure. Appreciate it. All Thank right. you very much, John. The opening is this coming Saturday, beginning at noon, Discovery Center on Winery out by the airport, so don't miss it. That's going to do it for us today. If it's uh, Connect With Me, hey, my friends, you must. You must be watching MeTV Fresno. We're back tomorrow. Have a good day. Thank you very much.